Welcome to Retro Reviews, where we dive into the digital vault to uncover and revisit classic games of the past. In each episode, we'll introduce, explain and review a different retro game to see if it still holds up today. Whether you're a seasoned gamer looking for a nostalgia trip or a new player curious about gaming history, we've got you covered. I'm Chris and this is Gamer's Delight. Today, we're soaring into the magical sport of Quidditch with Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup for PC, PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube and the Game Boy Advance. Released by EA in 2003, this game gave Harry Potter fans the chance to fully experience the exhilarating sport. But does it still capture the excitement today? And should you play it to bridge the gap until Quidditch Champions releases later this year? Let's find out. Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup begins by allowing players to learn the basics of Quidditch at Hogwarts. You can choose from any of the four Hogwarts houses and compete in the Hogwarts Cup. Once you've mastered the fundamentals, you advance to the international stage to compete in the Quidditch World Cup, where you can select from various international teams like the USA, Japan and Bulgaria. The game's graphics are acceptable by today's standards. The character models and environments are well designed for the time, creating a sort of playful experience. The design of the respective stadiums is particularly impressive, each reflecting the unique characteristics of the teams they host, from the scenic environments of Spain to the icy landscapes of Scandinavia. The sound design and music deserve praise. The game features a soundtrack written by Jeremy Soule that captures the epic and magical nature of Quidditch. Even more rousing is the usage of Verdi's Requiem Dies Irae for the game's opening scene because that goes hard. <laughs> Sound effects, from the whoosh of broomsticks to the thud of bludgers, are well crafted and add to the immersive experience. The game also features live commentary, which makes gameplay a little more refreshing. The control scheme is intuitive and easy to pick up. Each player position has unique controls and roles, adding depth to the gameplay. As a chaser, you'll pass and shoot the quaffle, aiming to score through the opponent's hoops. Beaters protect your teams by hitting bludgers towards the opposing team, while the keeper defends the goals. The seeker's role is to catch the golden snitch, which ultimately decides the game's outcome. One of the standout features of Quidditch World Cup is its fluid and fast-paced gameplay. The matches are thrilling and dynamic, with plenty of opportunities for strategic play and quick reflexes. A number of impressive special moves and combo passes add layers of strategy, allowing you to outmaneuver your opponents. The AI provides a reasonable challenge, although it goes without saying that this game was designed for a younger audience and may therefore not pose too big of a challenge for all players. The progression system is straightforward too. Winning matches and completing challenges unlock new teams and stadiums to encourage you to keep playing. The World Cup mode is particularly rewarding, as you face increasingly difficult opponents on your way to the championship. However, the game isn't without its flaws. The single-player campaign can feel repetitive over time, as the core mechanics remain largely unchanged throughout. Additionally, while the game offers a variety of teams, the difference between them are mostly aesthetic, with little impact on gameplay. Moreover, getting the game to launch is a challenge of its own, and you'll have to do some tinkering beforehand. Also, it can be difficult to get your hands on physical copies of the game. Luckily, there are game preservation websites that allow you to download the game and the required software fixes. The commentary and crowd noises, though initially immersive, can become repetitive as well. I consider the soundtrack somewhat of a letdown too. Don't get me wrong, it's perfectly fine. But compared to the other work by Jeremy Soule in particular, the Quidditch soundtrack just lacks variety. So, is Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup still worth playing today? If you're a fan of the Harry Potter series or enjoy sports games with a magical twist, the answer is yes. Its fast-paced gameplay, decent graphics and nostalgic charm make it a fun and engaging experience. While it may not offer the depth of modern sports games, its unique take on Quidditch provides a refreshing change of pace. 
One must not forget that this was the first game to fully take on an adaptation of Quidditch, something that even the movies have shied away from for a long time. Just be prepared for some repetitive elements and the usual old school quirks along the way. That wraps up our first episode of Retro Reviews. What did you think of Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup? Have you played it recently or is it on your list to revisit? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more gaming goodness. Join us next time as we continue to uncover the gems and relics from the world of gaming history. Thanks for watching and goodbye.